Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tamisha Iman Network. I am Tamisha Iman, and we are about to get started. First and foremost, thank you, everyone, for um, becoming a member of the network. I am over the moon ecstatic with you guys. Now, I'm sure and I'm hoping that you read the clause when you signed up that all of this content, it belongs to WC Enterprise. And I'm asking you guys, because you click the link, so you agree to it. Do not share this content on your social media or pass it over to anyone. The thing about it is there will be a fine. Now, if you are a blogger and you would like to use this content, please send me an email. And then therefore, moving forward, I will give you the permission um, to do so. But until then, I'm asking you nicely because there will be consequences for you sharing the content. Now, today, we are going to have the conversation of all times. You know, for the last year, it seems, but I'm sure it's not that long, um, and I'm sure from the show, this young lady and myself has been at each other's throat in media, as the people uh, would like to say, but honestly, we have not had the pleasure of having, actually having the conversation about this ever. So without further ado, I am going to welcome to the, my first <laughs> on the Tamisha One Network. Everyone, welcome the one and only, um, how does she say it, KD Top 2 Muse. <laughs> uh. Oh. Hi, everyone. Hello. Also, listen, I want to apologize for if I seem so low energy, if I look crazy, I got allergies and a sinus infection, but baby, we going to power through because you bitches want this, so we're going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're going to actually give you the fight, and we're going to give you the conversation, but no, we're not. We're not here to fight. We are here to discuss um, the situation as adults, and... Um, I wanted to do it on my platform because, to me, I have gotten so much negative um, press from the minions, the gremlins, and the pen pals. And I needed to drown out the noise, the noise, I'm sorry, to have a mature conversation. Before I get started, I have to give shots out to my one and only ride and die, Mitch. Baby, let me explain something to you. He is not the individual to make the arrogant, um, famous arrogant coast to coast anthem of the summer. But Mitch called me, and I am no lying. Mitch called me about an hour ago and said, Tamisha, I think you're in trouble. Do you need help? And guess what? I was in trouble. This week was actually on backwards, and he came in and straightened everything out. So I want to thank him so, so, so very much. Now, we are going to get into this. Candy, congratulations from me, from me, the bitch you sent home <laughs> for making it all the way to the top two. And bitch, I got to say, you said motherfucking Simone was your competition and you proved it. So get for it. I'm a motherfucking win. We're going to talk about that because I still say it what I said. <laughs> But I do have to congratulate you. You stayed focused. You stayed the course. And you set out and did exactly what you had in your heart to do. You know what I'm saying? So congratulations on that, first and foremost. Now, if, like, anything you want to say about that before we go into further? No, no. I mean, you know, I, I definitely, I, it, it was definitely a journey and a half making it to the top two. And um, I think that, you know, I think along the lines of the, of, like, the seasons, there were, like, a lot of things that were, like, being said by a lot of people, um, by Tamisha, um, about, like, how the show was running and stuff. But it, it was it was a journey and a half. And, uh, I mean, even that week, when you and I were in the bottom two, that week was brutal. You know how hard it was getting ready for that, um, that disco mentory challenge. That was difficult. So it's been a journey. It's been a journey. But look. How does it feel to accomplish your goal? It feels good. I mean, the, the goal was to, you know, 
try to win the show, but being the first runner up is the closest you get to winning drag race. So it really feels amazing and I'm just ready to see like what is the next step in as far as my career. Um maybe come back to All Stars or maybe not. You just I just wanna see like what's next. But it feels amazing. I feel like I already, I bust my ass to get to where I needed to get to. Okay. Now let me ask you this question. <clears throat> Do you hate me? <laughs> no. First of all, str- oh, hate is a very, very, very strong, strong word. I don't even dis- not dislike you. I don't even dislike you. Um, and anyone can attest to this. And if you if you watch any interview that I've given since I've been off of the show, um, I've always given Tamisha her props. I've always given Tamisha her her flowers. I've, I've, and I've always said, you can see any interview, I've always said, you know, Tamisha being one of the first older black pageant queens to come on the show and have the trajectory that she had and have the fan base that she had and being fan favorite. I'm like, baby, that is, you know, that is the legend status. Granted, before going on the show, I obviously, I didn't know who Tamisha was prior to getting on Drag Race. After getting off Drag Race and getting to know you, and having Tan, being the mother of Tandy Mama Dupree and all these icons, you know, I'm like, okay, give her a flower. So I don't, I definitely don't hate Tamisha. Uh, I think it was just two very strong people that had two very, have two very strong opinions that have two very strong different outlooks in life that just so happened to bump head while filming a TV show. Okay, let me ask you this one. Do you think I hate you? I don't necessarily think you hate me more than you hate Tina. <laughs> 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 I don't hate Tina. Tina hates me. <laughs> but no, 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 no. So I wanted to get that out the way because um, <clears throat> the fandom of this show takes things that they see, that the um, the network put out, and they run with it. I don't make any public comments about Candy because, first of all, I'm older, and I don't think... Because, like, off the camera, we were cool. <clears throat> yeah, our yeah. First, our first challenge together, we were good. The, the Yeah, the, the, the whoopee cushion and the yeah. black we yeah. We were good because it's like, I mean, like, we, the pork chop team had te- teamed up with, you know, the all-stars. So, therefore, we were good. Um, I think we had a turning point <laughs> when, and, 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 and I'm going to address this. So, <clears throat> The first, what you call, when you said, Simone is my biggest competition. I think for me, everybody said, well, you were wounded. Not necessarily wounded. I felt disrespected. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Because even though to you, I think Simone was your biggest competition. But to us, I think we all were in the contest. And the thing about it is, there were a lot of people that would not have said anything. Because I rate it all on their face, you know. And the thing about it, we all put our package together to come and try to do our best or whatever the case may be. And you singly hand, like, oh, that bitch my competition. You know, I don't, I don't see the rest of y'all. Fuck y'all, this, that, and the third. Now, mind you, even though I was the wounded Tamisha, I'm still Tamisha. You get what right. I'm saying? So you can't count me out. That's how I felt. So I couldn't speak for anyone else. I knew I came there to fight. So I think that was the first thing. And we didn't even... You notice you had your group, I had my group, y'all group had already bonded, our group had already bonded, and there was a lot of things we didn't say to each other. We rode in separate vans going but, back. Yeah, there were there was definitely a lot of things that weren't shown on the camera that we have said. Right. Uh, I, I think that in that moment when I said, I think when I went back home and watched it back, because I honestly don't remember anything that happened on the show. I remember everything through what we saw on the TV. Right. When I watched it back, and I was like, in my head, I was like, well, why do y'all care what Candy Muse has to say about who's her biggest competition? Since then, and I, g- growing throughout the season has has been uh, on the air, I definitely have grown a lot, and, I've, and, I, and I look back at the moment, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can see if I was in the room and if someone else said, oh, Lala's my biggest competition, and fuck all you hoes, I'd be like, uh-uh, we're all still here. So I see where you're coming from um, in that situation. And, and like I said, at the beginning of the season, I was very hard headed. I was, I did like, I thought I was hot shit out of the baby. I'm here to motherfucking slay, fuck all you hoes. And in that moment, Simone to me was the biggest competition because she had already won two challenges. I was like, baby, she's storming the girls. But I can see how in that moment, you're like, oh, bitch, we're all here. Don't discount at all. Especially, we all got to our package ready together during COVID. 
two ghost films is kind of the drag race. So let me ask let me ask you this: Did you have a big financial budget getting ready for the contest? Getting ready for drag race. When we got the call, I didn't think we were gonna get the call when we got it. I thought we were gonna have some extra time. So when we got the call for drag race, I didn't have this huge budget. I had a lot of people help me put my package together. I had a lot of rugos together. I had a lot of rugos help me put the package together. Um, Alaska, Eureka, Nikki Doll, I had a, a lot of girls uh, help me. And um, I was lucky enough to have money flowing in little by little while getting ready uh, for the show. But I didn't have this huge budget uh, for drag race. Not at the time that we were getting ready for the show. Right. I don't think, you know, I can't speak for everybody. Bitch, I'm, no one knew my story. So I wasn't working. I had, I was really working off of my savings. And we were in a very scary time. You know what I'm saying? So everything that I, I put together came off my fabric wall. I didn't have time to go get anything new or anything like that. Not making an excuse. I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying? So, and another thing I want to ask you, did I ever reveal that I had an ostomy bag? Only thing I think I revealed was the fact that I had cancer. I had just got over cancer. I the night that that aired on TV, which was the night that you got eliminated, um, I remember being at the bar where I was hosting the viewing party and the group chat, everyone was gagging. All the girls were gagging because we didn't know. Because you you didn't reveal it to, you revealed this in the, the in the confessionals, but not to, we never knew anything about that. And interestingly enough. I don't even think we ever saw you, like, getting in body or, like, getting in your garment. So we, I never knew anything up until the night when you revealed it on the show. So you, and I will say, and I've always said this, like, you never made an excuse for it. You never made an excuse for the fact that, and, like, I can't tell you how hard that documentary was. Like, it, to me, to, to people on TV may seem like, oh, that was such an easy, weird challenge. That was one of the hardest guys challenges that they've had on that show. It was very difficult getting ready for that. But you've never, you never made an excuse for that. Okay, okay, okay. Now. Um, I'm, I want to touch on this because I feel, um, a lot of times the, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, let me say this. I'm an older person, so I'm not easily influenced by people's opinion. I allow people's opinion and comments and stuff be that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not one to like, when they sent me the video from last night, Correct. It's like I was sitting here and I was putting in orders and I was like, girl. I just don't have the energy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm influenced about, about anyone's opinion. So I'm going to ask you, did a lot of opinions and, you know, comments from the fan fuel the, the, the fight or the rip that people thought that was actually there between you and myself? I think that there was a lot that went into it. I think, well, first and foremost, with that video, and I actually spoke about this with uh, Bob last night on live, when I, where in my mind, uh, you know, and I, and I said this with Bob on the live, I said, I was on the stage and I was asked a question and I answered it. And I was like, oh, you know, you've been in the industry for 30 years, have thick skin. And Bob said something to me that resonated with me, where it was like, well, that may be true, but we can't tell people how to feel. And I can't sit here and tell uh, Tamisha, well, you've been in the industry for so so many years. Whatever money exchange sets shouldn't bother you because at the end of the day, I'm I'm invalidating your feelings, and that's not fair to you. Um, and on that stage, I could have easily been like, "Oh, girl, haha, kiki, kiki," but because it was so public and you had made all these lashes, I was like, "Oh, girl, it's gonna be funny. We're gonna talk about it." And I could have diverted from that. And I I, I said this on live, and so I was like, "Listen, I'm like Tamisha, I uh, I'm sorry for that. I'm, I'm sure after because you've been such a fan favorite, and suddenly you're receiving all this hate." out of nowhere, and now you see one of the girls from your season always on a video talking about you on stage, and she was like, okay, girl, like, what is the point of this? I, I, I you know, it was my intention to, to like, uh, uh, make you switch the type of way, because to me, I was just being funny, and I could have diverted from the situation, and I did it, um, but Bob made me realize, I said, you know, I can't tell someone not to switch the type of way, and in my mind, this whole situation, uh, uh, it was just like, oh, you know, like Tamisha, like, girl, we all got back critiques the whole, like, the whole season. I got, I, I've been drunk to the mud. Like, why do you care? But it's like, no, you have every single, you have every single right to care because I don't know your entire story. I don't know your life. And I don't know what you've been through. You have every single right to feel the way you feel. Um, but as the season progressed, okay, so the last time you and I had a conversation was that last episode because I, unfortunately, we didn't get to see you for the promos. <clears throat> I had messaged you for your birthday, happy birthday, and then I had messaged you uh, 
because Kimura one time was like, oh, Tamisha's going to send all the good sneakers, so I'm going to send you uh, my size and all that. Um, and then I, from there, that's when the whole, the 10 minute preview had aired with the, uh, the twisted busted wig situation. Um, and then that's when the fans were getting riled up before the ball episode aired. And I had messaged her, I was like, hey girl, like, it's going to be great TV. It's going to be amazing. And then like, I was left on red. I was like, mm, okay, whatever. <clears throat> so then, then the, then the ball episode aired. So I was like, okay, last time me and Tamisha had a conversation was on set. We haven't spoken since then. We texted here and there. She said, thank you after I said happy birthday and stuff. But then in my mind, I was like, is her watching the the, the ball untucked back? Like, is that bringing back up, like, negative memories from set? Because we haven't really had a conversation. And last time I thought we hugged it out on stage and we were good. Um, but then, like, I saw, like, you know, certain things you were liking on Twitter or, like, we posted on your Instagram story. And I was like, and this is the weekend where I was getting dragged. This is the weekend where I was... um. Uh, getting all the death threats, they were messaging my mother, and I was like, in my mind, I was like, Tamisha doesn't have to speak out, but why isn't she speaking out to her fans who are a diehard, uh, die loyal Tamisha fans, and saying something like, girls, or like, y'all need to chill on Candy's TV, you know? Um, so in that moment, I was kind of confused, and I was like, well, I mean, I don't know what to do. I'm like, girl, I'm being attacked. <laughs> the entire world is attacking Candy News. Um, so I, I will say in that moment, I had a lot of resentment towards Tamisha. And I was like, towards you. Because I was like, well, girl, she's not going to speak up. And then, like, the exit interviews that you did about, like, how why you don't follow, like, half of the cast and stuff. It was like, okay, so, like, you clearly don't like me. And, like, I don't get it. Like, we had this argument on top and things got really heated. But I thought you worked it out after. And then I, I wasn't sure, like, if the intent was bringing back old memories. So it was a lot. I had, you know... Not hatred, but I was like, oh, girl, I was like, it is what it is at this point. I don't care for TV show. Like, I'm going to just continue on with Drag Race and do what I have to do. Um, <laughs> And obviously, it's been a good, I think, two months since The Untucked has aired. And uh, I, I don't watch back The Untucked because that is a, it's, a, it's a light that I don't like to see myself in. And that was a very ugly situation mm-hmm. that we uh, partook in. But, you know, it... it it really has become. I I like to say things that happen like in my life that are like really bad situations, and just like laugh at them because it really has become this iconic on top where you know we're both nominated for an MTV awards. So it's like you know how can I how can I hate someone? I've always said this. Drag Race is a pressure cooker. That part. When <laughs> we filmed that ball episode, it is a very long day. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was a very long day. You know, I'm sure, I, I don't know what your feelings were on stage when you were uh, being critiqued and you were in the bottom three that week, but I'm sure, you know, coming into Untalked and and you telling me I like some of your girls, I mean, snap you back. There's going to be conflict. There is a pressure cooker. And, um, you know, unfortunately, there are eight cameras there looking at our reactions, and that's the way things went about that, uh, that episode. But I don't think that I hold, like, right now at this moment, I don't think that I hold any negative feelings towards you. Throughout the season, yes, there have been, like, people in my ear. And then I'm like, oh, girl, you know. And it's easy to get influenced in the industry that we're in and that we work in. So I'm not going to lie, you know. I'm, there, there definitely have been, whether it's fan comments or, like, you know, just little things like that. Like, they, they get to you. You're like, all right, bitch. So what you're saying that you just really put me in this, this next segue. I never knew how to, like, <laughs> I had a fan base. A large fan base, but it was controllable because they knew me, they knew my personality, they knew what I liked and what I did not like. They know I didn't like gossip. I've never seen anything like this when it comes to this fan base. And the reason why I didn't speak out because watching years before, you would see girls speak out and it seemed like that was few the fighter. You know what I'm saying? So at, at the like, they were like, "Why aren't you saying it today?" I don't want to make it worse. You know what I'm saying? Because just because you says Say, Black Lives Matter. Don't mean you mean it. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, y'all don't do that to Candy. Don't mean, don't really mean you mean it. Or they're going to listen. I didn't want to give them. That's my, I'm telling you about me. I didn't want to give them. Me being older, I'm not going to think about things how you think about things. Correct. You know what I'm saying? I have to be the adult. You know what I'm saying? I really do. So I didn't even want to mention the situation that they were threatening your mother. or anything. I didn't want to touch it because I knew I couldn't stop it. It was so much bigger than me. 
it was so much bigger than me and I did not want to add fuel to the fire. That was my number one. Um, <laughs> this fan, like, they're crazy. And not all they're, of them. They're very passionate about the show. They're, they're real passionate, but at the end of the day, they're real vicious. If you see my inbox and how they throw candy, Simone, got me. You know what I'm saying? They just throw those, those things around as if they are representing you. Now, I don't charge anybody for it, and I don't expect you to control it. I think how we can combat that is to have these moments like we're having right here to show the people that it's not as serious as you make it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And and with you being younger, that's why I pulled back. You know, I pulled back from you. I pulled back from Denali. Because Utica, I mean, they, they sing, but I, it's like, you got to be the adult in the room. I had to. I look like a total ass being the age that I am. And Miss, well, Miss Candy is, Miss Candy, you know, I did that with Mo, Monet. I had a reason to do it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, do I hate Monet? Not at all. I don't hate her. But I think as entertainers of different ages, we have to understand each other and respect each other. I got to respect you for being the, the younger generation coming in doing what Candy has done. And people have to appreciate the fact that this old bitch kind of paved the way for us to be able to do what we've done. Now, you ain't got to kiss my ass or hold my hand. You don't have to do anything like that. But I, I, I want to tell people, you're going to get older, too, one day. And the worst thing can happen to you is a young bitch telling you you're an old bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not RuPaul. And this situation is, is bigger than me. But I'm going to always be the adult in the room. And I'm going to act accordingly. And I'm just wanting the other girls to do the exact same thing. You can't control your fans. But you can change the narrative. Because we all... Go ahead. Go ahead. I think that, that, I think that it's a double-edged sword. Because um, I, think yep. that, I think that there, there is a way where we can't control our fans. Especially the ones that really go... Hard for you because my the, the fans that I have that go hard for me. When I tell them, do not go on Tamisha's page and write Team Candy. Do not go on Tamisha's page and write some nasty shit because that that's not a reflection of who I am. So that, that you're not my fan. And and they do listen. They not all of them because we can't control <laughs> and we can't control what people are going to do. I know they you know they're going to be in their house, they're going to be in their phone, being we can't control everyone. But I think to some extent we have to. With the, with the platform that we have, we have to at least just like say it's like y'all need to chill, and it may not help the situation, but for the other person on the ending receive, on the ending, in rece receiving it, oh gotcha, uh, that <laughs> it, it, it shows something. Like, okay, like at least the person gave a fuck enough to say something because I thought for the past. Let me tell you something. For the past four months. When I walked off set from Drag Race, I was like, oh, it's going to be sickening, fan favorite, like, work, work, work. And then after that ball episode aired, that tainted my entire run on the show up until the very, very end. And for the past four months, I've been getting nonstop shit because of it. And that has nothing to do with you because at the end of the day, like, we were both involved in the situation, you know? Um, but it would have been nice to just know, like, okay, like, yes, we're not, we're not best friends and we're not besties coming off of season 13 but the bitch still gives at least a little bit of fuck to be like y'all need to chill you know for me let me explain it I've never had a fan base like this and I'm not like you you know how you welcome and accept your fan base this is overwhelming for me it's yeah. like you got people all across the world who are supporting you and you know with my fans we don't discuss the girls I discuss history. I discuss um, love, peace. You know, those are my my things because that's what I've done with my kids. So yeah. even though I know everybody's not my kid, I just operate as that. When like they said, "What do you think about candy?" I said, "Nothing. I don't think anything. Nothing bad." And then I explain, "Nothing bad. Nothing. I don't have no feeling because yeah. I don't want to give them something to run with it because you've already <laughs> got enough hate." So if anything, they're waiting on Tamisha to say, oh, I can't stand that bitch. And the, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to do that. So. Okay. okay.
Okay. Um, do you have the name of them? Okay, so Yasmin Jackson, we're seeing that you are sharing this Zoom. I asked you guys not to share it, and thank you for that $1,000 fine you just got added to your credit card. Now, if you think I am playing, I am promising you, I promise you on everything you, I love, everyone that is sharing this live, you have just increased my um, account. So, <laughs> my dear, in fact, <laughs> At this time, can you go ahead and block her and, and take her out? But I thank you for the thousand dollars. You tried me, little girl. Um, see if you can block her, Mitch. Um, could you see if you can find her and stop her and, and go ahead and block her? And I, I'll handle the charges later. So thank you very much. Anybody that is sharing this, I told you I own this content. Everything that is put on here, I own the rights to it. That's why I created my own channel. So thank you for that thousand dollars. Thank you so, so, so very much. And it's going to go through even if you cancel that card. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, and that's for everyone. I don't mind if you come to me the right way and you ask me if you could, you know, share it. I said that in my opening statement that you could, but you took it upon yourself to show me. So I thank you. I'm going to show you. Um, okay. So back to our conversation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead. If you can, Mitch, can't get it and stop. You know, gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> All right. I don't know where I was at, girl. I'm sorry. But I asked nicely. I told you. And it's in the clause. So therefore, uh-huh. Uh, but go ahead. Um, so oh, oh, okay. So then, you know, what were you saying? You said Oh, how the fan base is there, it's a, it's a lot to handle. Um, and you you don't add fuel to the fire by giving people, like, yeah. what is candy. But you know what? I, and I have to apologize because had we had this conversation, I think we would have known how, like, we're doing now to counteract that. It was so hot. Like, the temperature was so hot. Oh, yeah. Um, leaving the show to where it's like, Bitch, I can't, I'm, you know, I still have my ostomy bag and my stress level is not good. You know what I'm saying? So I try to stay calm to prevent myself from getting sick. So yeah. I just wished at that. And I'm so glad we're having it now. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So the, <laughs> like the you know, uh -huh. it's always, it's always better late than never to have a conversation, especially because you and I know what we went through filming Drag Race and, and while the show was airing and stuff. It wasn't that weird, though? Yeah. It, that, yeah. That was a very weird experience. It was a fun one. It yeah. Was weird. Yeah. Yeah, it was... It, well, it was tiring for me. I'm not even gonna lie. You know, and everybody... I'm sure everybody thought I was grumpy. Bitch, I go back to that room and it's a whole process. Like, my, my muscles would lock up and I would still have to fight through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was so much. And that hula hoop was heavy as hell. <laughs> that, baby, that hula hoop was ridiculously heavy. I tried, and I think I told y'all that day, like, I, I don't think I could even wear my normal shoes because I was having so many muscle spasms. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was crazy. Nevertheless, let's keep it moving. So, um, girl. You want to talk about the untuck? <laughs> we are talking about the untuck. No, we, we, we talked about... We we talked about a part of the untuck. Now, this is what I wanted to... You talked about it. So, this is what the people don't understand. Because, you know, the show made it seem like I came in hot as hell. Do you know when y'all were in untuck and y'all were talking... Because everything don't get filmed. And people don't understand that everything does not get filmed. We sat out there and we listened to y'all the whole time. And you and I were already, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? We were at each other. Yeah. So hearing you discuss me and, oh, well, you heard all that? When I was oh, like, I heard all that. When I was like, what, what else? I was like, to, to, I was like, to Misha, for someone that sells? Uh-huh. I heard all that. <laughs> and that's why I came in there, well, let me show this bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but you didn't know I heard all that. You get what I'm saying? That was and the first time I'm hearing it now. That's what I'm saying. Like, no one knew. 
that we were outside waiting for y'all to finish that conversation to come in. And you notice when I first came in, I didn't say a word. <laughs> I said, I sat straight down. And I was like, bitch, I'm hot right now. Don't ask me <laughs> no questions. We're going to be fine. And you said, <laughs> what do you think? I was like, oh, here you go, bitch. This is what <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm so you like, bitch, where did that come from? But you didn't know we had just listened to y'all on the outside. So that's, uh, <laughs> so that's where it came from. Nevertheless, um, moving forward. Candy, the one thing about you is I have the utmost respect for you. Bitch, you are a true New Yorker. You are salty, just like all of my other girls, um, my active kids. And that is who you are. And for someone that don't know you, it's going to be perceived. And I'm talking, speaking for me, I'm not talking about anybody else. It was going to be perceived as being arrogant. You get what I'm saying? And do I think you're arrogant? I don't think you're arrogant. I think you're sassy. I think that's your personality. You know what I'm saying? And if a person don't take the time and the liberty to get to know you, they will never understand who you are. I don't ever want you to think I hate you. I don't ever want you to think I think negative of you. I look at this contest because I'm a pageant girl. This is just another contest. It didn't make me and it won't break me. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. I'm older. So I went there and I tell everybody, I went to the show to, to live, not to win. Now, season 12, I was going to tear their ass up because I was still flipping and kicking in there and everything else. This old bitch was finna show showing. But after going through some a situation to where I almost lost my life, the crown was not the prize. You know what I'm saying? The prize was being able to get back to what I love, and that's the art of female impersonation, drag. You know what I'm saying? So I don't ever think, I don't ever want you to think that I hate you or I dislike you, and I don't fall into the fans' drama, and I'm hoping moving forward, and now that I know how you feel, I can address my supporters differently because I don't know. Oftentimes when you don't know something, you don't necessarily know how to respond. And that's been with a lot of the girls. I mean, I, I, I honestly felt that a lot of the girls looked at, oh, that old bitch, this, that, and the third, whatever, whatever. And I, I've never been that individual to think that way about my older generation, mm. but many people do. Like, I, I'm the type, I will reach back to my older generation because I knew I was going to get old. You know what I'm saying? I just, it's so gagging to know, because to me, I was just 25. And to know I didn't double that, that's crazy. Now, I'm dealing with people that are 25. So right. I love you, not just because you're my sister. And the thing about MTV, let me tell you this. Now, I block them. I block them because they, they, uh, uh, they acknowledge you about the war. They never acknowledge me in any, not in an email, not in anything on any of my pages. You know what I'm saying? And to me, People think, oh, you're in your feelings. No, it's Candy and Tamisha. You get what I'm saying? So I'm the type of person is, I just want people to do stuff in decency and in order. And if you don't do that, you can't get mad when I get mad. You understand? So how you you hit me up on Twitter, I think, you're like, hey, girl, we got an award. So I'm waiting to see if they're going to ever acknowledge me. They never did. So I blocked them on all social media sites. Go ahead. Well, I, I do want to say to Misha, they, I think you blocked them a little bit early because they did make a post out specifically for you with a Tamisha Iman video for the... Um, I blocked them two weeks after yours came, Candy. No, girl, I'm going to find you the link. I'm going to send it to you because I saw it. But I can feel... Uh, also, going back to uh, uh, what we were saying real quick about, like, I knew going into Drag Race, I was like, I know I'm a hothead. I know I'm coming off as a banshee loud bitch. I, listen, all these things people say about me, I know. I look in the mirror, I'm like, you're a lot to handle. And I want to be the funny one, the loud one in the room. So walking into season 13, you know, a lot of the girls already knew who I was. So I was like, oh, it's going to be like the candy shows. So when Tamisha wasn't reciprocating the energy that I wanted, I was like, well, how come she isn't like me and everyone else likes me? So like, what is it that... But, you know, something that someone said, uh, I saw, they were like, you know, maybe the girls are, maybe some of the girls are afraid to tell you because you're so loud and stuff. And they were like, and Tamisha being older, she was, she, she she was like, well, here's what it is, and here's what I'm going to tell you. But <clears throat> with that being said, um, I, I, you know, I was confused why we weren't clicking. Because, or on seconds, even like when we were off camera, we were, the, I, I do remember there was this one time you were in phase. We were both in phase. I don't. I think we were getting ready for the. And we went outside. Mm -hmm. 
we were having a conversation outside with the PA. We were by the parking lot. It was I, I do remember that. And during rehearsal and stuff. I was like, okay, so like we have the the capability to be cool. We I just don't see why it's not happening. And I think but, that um, let me stop you right there. Do you notice that Candy with Tamisha individually is different from Candy with the group? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Candy with Tamisha one on one, it was peaceful. Candy with the group, it's a different feel. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that I do think that you being eliminated when you got eliminated definitely uh hinder any possibilities of there having been a relationship after the show. Cause I do think that by that point where we had made up we were cordial had you continued on i think that there could have been a, a relationship that would have developed moving forward um and and, and i felt like when you got eliminated i felt bad and i i don't think they aired this but i remember walking to the mirror message and i looked at the girls crying and i was like i feel bad the fact that i just sent tamisha home because i feel like i took her second chance away i said that in front of all the girls and then the, the, rest of the girls were like no you fought for this and i was like you know i did my job i went out there i did my job and i lip sync i still feel bad because we we had this like this whole momentum and like now she's gone and i felt bad about the situation because i'm a very empathetic person where i feel feelings for people um, so that's why I was a little confused after the show was done. I was like, oh, we're not, we're not going to talk. Okay, whatever. But I, I don't hate Tamisha Shema. I don't hate you. I don't dislike you. I think you're a fucking, I think you are one of the most prettiest queens to ever be on Drag Race, first and foremost. I think you are, I call it a legend. Yes, we had, uh, 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 you know, the bumps in the road, but girl, it's fucking drag. You know what? Drag queens fight, and we are, we are gay men dressed up in fucking women's clothing, uh, filming a damn TV show. Tensions are fucking high. And I think that what people feel to realize sometimes is that, you know what? <clears throat> you're not always going to get along with everyone, and, oh, they're, they're, they're going to be tops. You're going to bump heads with people. But that doesn't mean that you dislike each other or you hate each other. I don't hate you, and I don't dislike you. In fact, I think you're fucking dope. I think that, like, the fact that you make all your shit is dope. I think every single time, uh, they post a video for you from back in, in the uh, 1701 hot kick and a dude splits. I'm like, okay, work, bitch. I don't, you know, this is no, bitch, I'm not gonna let you slap that 1701. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think that sometimes things can be fueled up by the fans and by the viewers, and and we can get a you know hot head of things, but I don't, I don't have any negative things towards you, and that's why, like, when you know, when Bob told me, when Bob was like, you know, you can't say how Tamisha should feel about our situation because we did not listen to Tamisha's lives. We have not walked her footsteps. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely correct. And that's why I was like, I, I, I am sorry for even going on stage. I'm like, oh, Tamisha, bitch, you should do, like, unnecessary. Um, especially because I've done a lot of growing since the show, and I've done a lot of maturing since the show. And I don't ever want you to think that, like, I'm still that little girl from the... Not that I'm over here like, please, Tamisha, forgive me. But I don't want you to think oh. that I'm that little girl from um, Talk where I was, because by the time we even finished showing me, I was such a completely different person. And even just now, I, I feel like such a completely different person. Um, where I'm like, you know, from this point forward, like, I am fine moving on and starting fresh and starting new. I think that people think that sometimes because we fought on a TV show, we can't, we can't be friends or we can't have this relationship. I'm like, girl, I've seen plenty of girls that have fought on that show and have moved on to, to have really great relationships. Uh, one thing I do want to clear up, and you know, we're almost about this, so I'm just going to say this indirectly, and please pay attention. Yes. Um, you know, we do certain interviews about what we are going to say at certain times before we actually record. You with me? So, uh, the interview was over, <clears throat> but in the pre-interview, I had said if the camera, that part, listen, now the interview was over, gone, take, taking wig off and everything, took Mike off, they, hold on, hold on, hold, wait up, wait a minute, wait a minute, and I can't say everything, and you said, and I was like, are y'all really, really, and they was like, well, you, and I was like, Ugh. so, Yes, if the camera wasn't there, bitch, at that moment, I would have hit your ass. But <laughs> that was a conversation for me and the interviewer. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they took it 
And that's that's all I want to say about that. No, but that was never my intent to put that out. It was just what was, oh, hey, you remember you said, and I was like, really? Didn't y'all notice I didn't say that here? I was, but anyway, so I just wanted to say that. Now, now, bitch, at that moment, this is what I can't stand. In my day, you ready to fight when you do this. And if you know <laughs> I put your high head where I get mad, I'm like, bitch, I'm fucking mad. And I ain't gonna fly with everyone. I, no, that's to me, that's my fighting point. Anytime I've ever got in a fight, it was this right here. Because to me, at that point, when you slap in your hands, you ready to go. And I had forgot all about the bags. I, I the bag, I forgot I was in heels. I said, okay, because I, I, I used to play football. I'm finna have to show her how strong I am. You get what I'm saying? So that was in my mind. And the camera lady, remember the black camera lady that ran over there and got between us? Baby, she kept doing this right here. And had she not did that, I don't think I would have snapped back. But then it was like, bitch, you're on a reality show. You okay, you're in the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad we made good TV at that moment. You know what I'm saying? So, Candy, love you to death. Wish you nothing but the best. Very proud of you. Very proud of you. And I, like I said, I wish you much success. I told you, girl, I'll see you on the road. <laughs> and that's what I meant. Okay. Absolutely. So, I, feel, I feel the same way. I, 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 you know, I have so much respect for you. And I think that moving forward, one, I think that this whole candy was just a major thing is like done. Right. That, a done situation. Right. Moving forward, I mean, like I said, I have nothing but respect for you. And I would speak nothing but the utmost good things about you because honestly, besides that one thing in on talk, like we had a really good time outside, like you know. So, yeah, and 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 and, and not making an excuse, but bitch, I was sick, and sick people are grouchy. You know what I'm saying? Just point blank people. So yeah, but um, thank you for coming on the show, being the first person on the network. I am so honored and grateful. Um, I'm gonna call you as soon as this ends. Yes. Thank you. Hopefully they can put this into the universe that, yeah, bitch, we got on him. We duped it out. And guess what? <laughs> we good. Love you, sis. Love see, you. You in, see you in the, See you when I see you, girl. <laughs> see you when I see you. <laughs> All right. Listen, everybody, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been an amazing show. Once again, this was not possible had Mitch not came up out of whatever he was That's doing. Mr. And stayed you know what I'm saying? So we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Catch me next week and just to see who the conversation is going to be with. I have a lot of things lined up for this network dealing with the girls. And it's not all just serious conversation. It will be a lot of laughter and fun. So please stay tuned. Thank you once again for joining um, the Tamishi Ma Network. And thank you to all of you that we are about to track down to say, I mean, that took this live because I asked you not to take it live. And, you know, if you just do stuff in decency and in order, I asked you to contact me to say, hey, Tamisha, can we do X, Y, Z? You don't know my answers. You didn't give me a chance. So, therefore, I'm going to tear that credit card up. And that's why I decided to create this membership so I can track each and every one of you down. <laughs> but to all of the followers and the fans and supporters, thank you guys. Amazing night. Sorry it took so long. Enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs>